Yo, yo, what is up, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today I'm going to be giving you one breakout candidate from all 30 NBA teams. This is an extension of a video I made a couple months ago where I give you five breakout candidates for the entire league. And a lot of people asked, what about my favorite team? So here we are. We're going to go through all 30 NBA teams. I'm going to give you a player and give a quick rundown because if I spend too long on this, it's going to be like a 30 minute video. We're going to go through them pretty quick. I'll give a bit of an explanation why I picked each player and talk about why I think they could go ahead and break out. Leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting off with the Philadelphia 76ers, I picked Tyrese Maxey. Maxey stepped up in a big way for Philly this past season. After Ben Simmons and that whole situation went down, Maxey was thrust into the starting point guard role where he was really good. He only became better when James Harden came into town. The two of them are one of the best backcourts in the league, and I think that Maxey has another step in him. He was already really efficient last year, but I think with Harden and Embiid and Tobias Harris, all taking more pressure off of him. I think he's going to have more room to play his game, take guys one-on-one. -on -one. He's got a great floater. He can knock down threes at an insane clip. And he's one of the fastest players in the league. I think Maxi, playing alongside this high-end talent that he is could go ahead and potentially make some all-star noise this season. For the Milwaukee Bucks, I picked Bobby Portis. The Bucks are a bit of an older team, so they don't have a lot of young guys that could take leaps, and I didn't go with rookies on this list, so Marjan was not in the conversation, but Portis is somehow only 27 years old. It feels like he should be at least 29 or 30, but he's not, and I think he's in position to potentially make a case to be the starting center on the Bucks sooner than later. Brooke Lopez is still really solid, and his defensive versatility as well as floor spacing does help the Bucks a lot, but Portis can floor space just as well if not better at this point. And I think by the end of the season, we could see Portis jump into that starting role, allowing him to get more numbers after he got a bag this past offseason. For the Chicago Bulls, I picked Patrick Williams, one of the more obvious picks, I think, for this team. Williams was the fourth overall pick a few years ago, and he's been solid so far, but he hasn't really had that big jump that we see a lot of top five picks have, and this could potentially be the year. Lonzo's going to miss the beginning of the season, and they need somebody to step up. I think P. Will could go ahead and do that. He's a guy that has a lot of potential offensively and defensively. He's been in the lab all offseason working on his game and shown a lot of really fun flashes of self-creation off the draft. Dribble. The Bulls already have two elite creators in DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine, but they could, you know, use another one as well as someone to give them a bit of a defensive presence in the front court because Vucevic doesn't really do that. So I think P. Will is in for potentially a big season. And at the least, he's going to be a really solid 3 and D wing for the Chicago Bulls team. Next, we've got the Cleveland Cavaliers, who I picked the obvious. Evan Mobley. Mobley is a guy that I think is going to become a superstar eventually. He could be a defensive player of the year very, very soon as well. And I think this is the year where he takes his first step towards both a defensive player of the year nod and superstardom. I think he's going to make all defensive noise. He has more offensive game than people give him credit for too. And now that he's got two great creators in Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland alongside him, he's going to get a lot of great looks and opportunities. I think Evan Mobley could make some all-star noise, all defensive noise, and he's going to quickly start to look like the superstar that he will eventually become. For the Celtics, I went with Robert Williams. I've been a big supporter of Rob for a while now over the last few seasons, and I think finally people are realizing how good he is. I think he's only going to continue to get better. Horford's getting older, so he's still going to be solid, but I think Rob will take a bit more of the reins in that front court. I think he's going to be a Defensive Player of the Year candidate again. He could have won the award this past year if he didn't get hurt, and also I think he's going to be more offensively involved for the team as they continue to try and you know bulk up their offensive strategy strategies to try and make a run back to the NBA Finals. They've got a new playmaker too in Malcolm Brogdon, who I think could help him get, you know, more lob opportunities and set him up in some spots. I think Rob Williams is in for a great season, and I think he could become an all-star sooner than later. Next, for the Clippers, we have Terrence Mann. He stepped up really big for the Clippers last season with an injury-riddled season, and I expect him to continue to get better. He's shown both scoring and defensive flashes, and has already had numerous big games for Los Angeles. I think he's going to have his best season yet, even if the numbers don't necessarily reflect it because the Clippers have a million of offensive options. I think Terrence Mann is going to be a guy that quickly establishes himself a role in a very crowded team and becomes invaluable to their success. 
For the Memphis Grizzlies, I went with Zaire Williams. He had a pretty good rookie season last year in a crowded Grizzlies rotation that has now more opportunities for him due to the departure of Kyle Anderson, who played a really big role. I think Zaire is going to be one of the first guys off the bench for that team, has a bunch of two-way potential, and could really excel playing off of John Morant. I'm really high on his game, and I think that giving him more of a role this upcoming season could help the Grizzlies take that next leap. And they already traded up for him last year in the draft, so clearly they believe in him, and I think that they're going to go ahead and see the player that they want him to become this year. For the Hawks, I went with Onyeka Okongwu. He's been really effective in limited run these past few seasons. He has better offensive and defensive ratings with Trey Young than Clint Capella does, who honestly wasn't that great last year. Okongwu's younger, and it feels like it's only a matter of time before he eventually becomes the starting center for that team. And eventually, I think that could be a key to the Hawks continuing to get better. They traded for DeJounte Murray, who's a solid playmaker too, and him and Trey Young together could help set Okongwu up for lobs, get some decent, you know, spot up opportunities in the mid-range around the post. I think OO is going to have a really solid season, could eventually take the starting spot, and I think his jump that he could potentially make this season or next is what is key to the Hawks taking their step towards contention. For the Heat, I picked Omar Yurt 7. They lost some front court depth with P.J. Tucker going to Philly, and they desperately need someone to step up. He was a solid backup this past year, and I expect him to get more opportunities. He's not going to start at power forward or anything, but the Heat just need more play in the front court, and I think he's going to be one of those guys that's called on to step up, and the Heat just managed to turn every player into a stud. I think Yurt 7 could be one of those next guys. For the Hornets, I went with P.J. Washington. Miles Bridges is no longer on the roster, which leaves a really massive scoring gap left over, and P.J. feels like a guy who could step up in that regard as a floor spacer. He can play multiple positions and really benefit from Lamelo's playmaking. He's had a couple really solid seasons, but maybe this is a year where he takes that next step. For Utah, I went with Jared Vanderbilt. He really excelled defensively last season, is now one of the main young pieces on a Jazz team entering a rebuild, and I think he can expand his offensive game with more opportunity to grow. I think he has potential to make an all-defensive team as soon as this year, although the Jazz are probably going to be awful, so that could take away some of his hype, but I think that he's a guy that could eventually be a perennial all-defensive guy. I hope they give him some opportunities to really excel and try and create for himself and just explore his game, and if they do, this could be the start of something really good for Jared Vanderbilt. For the Sacramento Kings, I have Malik Monk. Monk was really good as a guy off the bench for the Lakers this past season, one of their very few solid three-point shooters. That earned him a $40 million contract with the Kings, where I think he can really excel. He can fly high, he can make threes, which is perfect, next to guys in De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis, who aren't great shooters. I expect him to have a pretty solid role on the team, and he could have the best year of his career this upcoming season. For the Knicks, I picked Quentin Grimes. Quentin survived all the trade rumors with Donovan Mitchell going to the Cavaliers, and I still, despite, you know, I thought he would have had a little more of a breakout year if he was one of the feature guys on Utah, I still think he could have a really good year for the New York Knicks. He showed out in Summer League. He was clearly too good to be there. He's a great 3 and D player, has shown ball handling capabilities. I'm really hoping the Knicks allow him to start some of the season because I think he's a perfect player to fit in next to Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, Julius Randle. I think he could fit so well in that starting lineup. He's one of their most intriguing pieces on the roster, and I'm really hoping he gets a ton of run and gets a chance to shine. And if he does, he's going to show how good he is. For the Los Angeles Lakers, I picked Lonnie Walker. He averaged just over double digits with the Spurs this past season, and is going to be the bucket getter off the bench, a go-to guy for them when LeBron or AD or Russell Westbrook aren't in. He could really benefit from LeBron's playmaking as well, and I think he's going to play a similar spark plug type role to what Malik Monk did last year and have a career year. For Orlando, I went with Wendell Carter Jr. He was really good last season and is the magic center of the future. He can do basically anything. He's a solid defender. He can play make decently. He can hit threes. He really does everything. And he was going off at the end of the season. I think he had a 30 and 15 game. I expect him to be in conversations for an all-star spot if the magic surprise people. And now that he's playing alongside talent like Franz Wagner, Paolo Bancaro, you know, solid guards too, and Markel Fultz, Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony, the magic are getting a ton of great young talent. And I think Wendell Carter will benefit from that as he continues to have great talent around him, opening up his game and allowing him to play more in his lane. I think Wendell Carter is a future all-star. For Dallas, I went with Christian Wood. He's playing alongside Luka. He's going to really have his game unlocked, have a ton of lobs, get a ton of wide open threes, good looks. When you play alongside Luka Doncic, you are probably going to have one of the best years of your career. I expect that to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if Christian Wood is in some all-star conversations at the four spot for Dallas. 
For Brooklyn, I went with Nicholas Claxton. He's kind of only the real center on the roster other than a guy like Dayron Sharp, who's still very young. I think Clax is going to get some solid run as a defensive force inside. He can also protect the perimeter a lot better than most people think he can. He's a solid option for them at the five. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some starts. Although I think when they go to closing lineups, Ben Simmons will play the five a lot of the time. But when it comes time to play teams like Philly or Denver and you need someone to play that bigger role, I think Nick Claxton can step up in a big way and I think he's gonna have a lot better of a season than some people might think he will. With the Nuggets I went with Bones Highland which I feel like is a pretty obvious pick. Monte Morris is now gone which gives him more opportunity. Of course that also means the return of Jamal Murray but Bones is a guy that makes the most out of all opportunities that he gets. He really took advantage of the opportunities he got last year. He was one of their most consistent players towards the end of the season. A great shot creator he can knock down threes and I think he's gonna play really well as a spark plug off the bench and be a great potential potential six man for a team that is going to try and compete for a championship. With the Pacers, it's obviously Tyrese Halliburton. He was mentioned in my previous video as well, but I have to talk about him. He balled out for the Kings without Fox last season and turned it up even more for the Pacers. It's going to be his first full season as the lead guard on the team, and he's got the pieces around him to have a really fun offense. A guy like Miles Turner that can stretch the floor, young guy Benedict Matherin, Buddy Heald can knock down threes. I think he could be near 2010 numbers and be in all-star conversations for Indiana. With New Orleans, I went with Trey Murphy III. He showed a ton of 3 and D flashes last season, especially in the playoffs, and he's a perfect player for this Pelicans roster. Having guys like Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, Zion Williamson that can attack and break down defenses, all he's kind of got to do is spot up on the perimeter and lock up on the other end, and I think he's going to do exactly that. I expect him to quickly become a staple of their rotation and be a super impactful player this upcoming season. With the Pistons, I went with someone very obvious in Cade Cunningham. He was electric last season as the first overall pick, has superstar potential, and now that he's more talent around him, it'll take some of the pressure off of him. Jay and Ivy gives him a nice partner in the backcourt. A guy like Jalen Duran gives him a really solid lob threat. I think Cade will be in all-star conversations. For the Raptors, I went with my second obvious pick in the row, Scotty Barnes. He's the reigning rookie of the year, good defender, underrated playmaker. As long as his shot continues to come along, Scotty Barnes is on a all-star, all-NBA trajectory. He's going to continue to make strides this upcoming season. As the Raptors, I expect will give him more opportunities and responsibilities. Scotty Barnes is going to be phenomenal, and I, he's another guy that I think could make a lot of all-star noise. And for the third straight obvious pick for the Rockets, I went with Jalen Green. I think he could jump up to around 20 points per game as he really stepped it up in the second half of last season. Now with an extra floor spacer in Jabari Smith, he's got Alperin Shengu now who's a solid playmaker. And now that Christian Wood isn't in the front court taking away some of his numbers, I think Jalen Green, like I said, could average well into the 20 points per game very, very quickly. He's a high flyer. He can do basically everything offensively. Jalen Green is going to be really fun this year. For San Antonio, I went with Devin Vassell. I mentioned Calden in the other video, so I did decide to go Devin Vassell here. Showed a lot of 3D potential over the last couple seasons, and I think now that he's got more opportunity on a Spurs team that really lacks go-to scores, I think Vassell could step up as one of those top two or three guys and break out with the more opportunities that he's given. For Phoenix, I went with DeAndre Ayton. Now, there were a lot of questions about his role and aggressiveness in the playoffs, and I expect those to be answered this season. With Chris Paul getting older, I think the Suns kind of realized that they need someone to take some of the load off of him, and I think having DeAndre Ayton on the roster, he's a prime candidate to take more of that offensive responsibility. He can catch lobs, I think he needs to be more aggressive down low, demand the ball, and I hope that he and Monty Williams realize how important it is to have him get more involved in the offense. I think they will, and I think he could make all-star conversations conversations this season. For OKC, I went with Trey Mann. As a Thunder fan, when I see people talk about our young core, Trey kind of gets forgotten. He's already one of the best space creating guards in the entire league heading into his second season. He had multiple 20 point quarters this past year versus Boston and Miami, two really good defensive teams. And once his shots start falling because he's already great at creating them, he's going to become an incredibly dangerous scorer. I think he could be a great six man for us this upcoming season and long term. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, it's Anthony Edwards. It's very obvious. He's a rising superstar, and now that he's got a guy in Rudy Gobert to help him out with D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns, they're a team that is primed to rise towards the top of the Western Conference, and I think Ant is really going to benefit from having more talent around him. He's going to get to focus a lot offensively, and I expect him to average around 25 points per game this season. 
For the Blazers, I went with Anthony Simons. Once again, a very obvious guy, but he really broke out last season as the lead scorer on a decimated Portland team and showed ridiculous shot-making capability, especially from three, and I think he could take another leap this year. Now that he's going to have Damian Lillard next to him, he's only going to get more efficient and get better opportunities when the defense is focusing on Dame, as well as a guy like Jeremy Grant, who's now in town. I think Simons could make all-star conversations, average near 20 points per game, and quickly become a great backcourt partner with Damian Lillard. For the dubs, we've got Jonathan Kuminga. They lost some forward depth with Otto Porter and GP2 leaving this past season, and somebody's got to step up, and I think the Warriors expect him to. I think that's part of why they let Otto Porter and Gary Payton walk. One, they kind of need to save money with Jordan Poole's contract coming up, but also I think they believe in guys like Moses Moody and Jonathan Kuminga, and I think Kuminga, who already showed a ton of upside this past season as a slasher, could really thrive with guys like Curry, Clay, and Dre around him. I expect him to have a pretty good year, kind of stepping into one of those backup forward roles. And finally, for the Washington Wizards, we've got Denny. Denny is a guy that I think could go ahead and make the starting role at some point this season. Right now, they kind of have a hole at the small forward. Will Barton is probably going to be the starter, but I don't feel like he's a great fit. I think Denny fits a little bit better. He was a top 10 pick very recently, and when he's got an opportunity, he's shown a ton of tools as a defender and a ball handler. I just really hope he gets more run and secures a starting spot, because if he does, I think he could surprise a ton of people. And so those are my 30 breakout candidates. Let me know if I picked the wrong guy for your favorite team in the comment section below. Who are you most excited for for your favorite team? Who's going to break out? I want to know all of that in the comments. I appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy. I'll see y'all later. Real one say it back.